Welcome to Sonic Legacy, the podcast where we dive deep into the stories behind the music that shaped our world. In today's episode, we're exploring the lives, careers, and lasting legacies of two iconic musicians who both left us on this day, November 24th, 1991. Of course, Eric Carr, the powerhouse drummer of KISS, and Freddie Mercury, the legendary frontman of Queen. Though their journeys were different, their contributions to rock and roll remain timeless. Join me as we celebrate their artistry, reflect on their impact, and honor their enduring influence in music history. Eric Carr. Eric Carr, the fox behind the drums. Eric Carr born Paul Charles Caravello on July 12, 1950. In Brooklyn, New York, is remembered as a significant figure in rock and roll world. Best known as the drummer for the iconic rock band KISS, Carr played an essential role in revitalizing the band during a challenging period in their history. His life, career, and untimely death left a lasting legacy on both fans and fellow musicians. His early life and musical beginnings, Paul Caravella grew up in a modest working class family in Brooklyn. He discovered his passion for music early, influenced by the Beatles and other rock bands of the 1960s. Carr began playing drums at the age of 14 and developed a keen interest in the rhythm and percussion. After graduating from high school, Carper pursued his musical ambitions while working odd jobs to support himself. Despite several early attempts to break into the music scene with local bands like The Cellarman and Salt and Pepper, success eluded him. His relentless determination and talent, however, earned him respect in a local New York music circuit. By the late 1970s, Carr was performing with a band called Flasher, playing covers of popular rock songs and originals joining KISS. KISS, known for their theatrical stage performances, explosive pyrotechnics, and iconic face paint, was at a crossroads in 1980. The departure of their original drummer, Peter Chris, left the band searching for a replacement. Carr auditioned among 200 other hopefuls. His professionalism, personality, and powerful drumming style impressed the band, earning him the position. With his induction into KISS, Carr adopted the persona of the Fox. Complete with Fox-themed makeup design, he debuted on the 1981 album Music from the Elder, a concept album that marked a departure from the band's traditional hard rock style. Although the album did not achieve commercial success, Carr's drumming showcased his technical skill and adaptability. The Kiss Era, 1981-1991 Carr became a key member of Kiss during the transformative period. The band's next album, Creatures of the Night, 1982, featured his powerful, thunderous drumming style, which redefined Kiss's sound. Tracks like I Love It Loud highlighted his aggressive playing, winning over the fans who were skeptical about his ability to fill Peter Chris's shoes. In 1983, Kiss made the groundbreaking decision to remove their makeup, unveiling their true identities for the first time since the band's inception. Carr embraced this change, proving that his talent and charisma were extended far beyond the Fox persona. Albums like Lick It Up in 1983, Animalize in 1984, and Asylum in 1985 marked a resurgence for Kiss, with Carr contributing not only as a drummer, but also as a vocalist on tracks like Little Caesar and Black Diamond during live performances. Carr's contributions extended to songwriting with credits on tracks such as Under the Rose and All Hell's Breaking Loose. His creative input added depth to the band's evolving sound, blending elements of hard rock, glam metal, and power ballads. His personal life and character. Carr was known for his warmth, humor, and down-to-earth personality. Despite being a member of one of the world's most famous rock bands, he remained approachable and generous with his fans. His dedication to his craft and his loyalty to KISS earned him the respect of his bandmates, even during turbulent periods. Carr's connection with fans was unmatched. He often went out of his way to engage with them, signing autographs and answering letters. He embodied the ethos of rock and roll while maintaining a reputation as a kind-hearted and genuine individual. His illness and death. In 1991, tragedy struck when Carr was diagnosed with heart cancer, a rare type of cancer known as heart sarcoma. Despite undergoing surgery and chemotherapy, his his health continued to decline. Carr's final recording with Kiss was the track God Gave Rock and Roll to You 2, featured on the Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey soundtrack. Though his condition limited his ability to participate fully, his contributions demonstrated his resilience and commitment. 
On November 24, 1991, Eric Carr passed away at the age of 41. The loss of Carr deeply affected fans, friends, and the music world. His death marked the end of an era for Kiss, as he had become an integral part of their identity over the decade. His legacy. Eric Carr's impact on Kiss and the broader rock world was profound. As a drummer, he brought a revitalized energy and technical precision to the band's music, helping them transition into the 1980s and maintain their static status as rock icons. His powerful drumming style, characterized by its intensity and precision, inspired countless musicians. Carr's warmth and humility left an indelible mark on his fans and bandmates. Tributes poured in following his death, with Kiss dedicating their 1992 album, Revenge, to him. The album's liner notes included a heartfelt tribute underscoring the depth of the band's admiration for him. In 2011, marking the 20th anniversary of his passing, the documentary, Eric Carr, Inside the Tale of the Fox, celebrated his life and contributions. Fans continued to honor Carr through fan clubs, tribute events, and online forums, keeping his memory alive. Eric Carr is also remembered through charitable work carried out in his name, including initiatives supporting cancer research. His influence extends beyond his tenure with KISS, as younger generations of rock enthusiasts discover his music and story. In conclusion, Eric Carr's life and career were defined by resilience, passion, and unwavering dedication to music. From his modest beginnings in Brooklyn to becoming the heartbeat of one of rock's most legendary bands, Carr's journey is one of inspiration and triumph. His legacy endures through his contributions to KISS, his influence on drummers worldwide, and fond memories he left behind. Though his time was tragically short, his impact on the world of rock and roll is timeless. A quick note, I, uh, of course, those of you who know me, this is Andy, by the way, uh, those of you who know me know KISS is a very big influence on my life, and uh, when Peter left the band and they got the new drummer, Eric, you know, as like everybody at that time, I too was a little skeptical. I didn't know what to expect. But it didn't take long to realize how great Eric Carr was and just how much of a force behind the drum set he was. I was lucky enough to see him live a couple of times, and uh, I'm thankful that I was. Uh, I also was incredibly lucky to meet Eric one time. Uh, he took time out of his busy schedule at the arena at the Cincinnati Gardens and I yelled his name he looked at me and said what and I uh, I said I don't know I didn't know what to say I wasn't prepared for you to answer me and he walked over and uh, I started telling him a story and I'm a high school kid I'm probably 16, 17 whatever it was I don't remember the exact age but I'm telling this him this, this stupid story about my band playing a Kiss song at a talent show at my school and how much kiss meant to me and at the time his security was pulling him like Eric come on we gotta go and he looked at his security guard I swear to you he says do you wait a minute I'm talking to my friend here and he put his arm around me and said go ahead and finish your story now the story meant nothing to him but it meant the world to a young kid who was an up and coming dreaming rock star that was a lot of years ago and I've never forgotten that story he took time to stand there with me, put his arm around me, listen to my story, and then he signed an autograph for me on my ticket stub. Um, to this day, that still means a lot to me. And uh, again, I'm very thankful that I was lucky enough to meet the amazing Eric Carr. He was uh, not just a great drummer, but an amazing human being. And those of you who are lucky enough to meet him know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to the next person that I want to talk about on this episode. Uh, the, the world, we lost two amazing musicians this day. Eric Carr, of course, being the one. And uh, the next one that we'll talk about is Freddie Mercury, the amazing frontman for Queen, who died on the same day as, Freddie Mar as Eric Carr, which is just unbelievable. So let me give you a little history and some background on the great Freddie Mercury. Uh, Freddie Mercury, a legacy beyond compare, as, I, as I'm going to tell you here. Freddie Mercury was born Farouk Bolsara on September 5th, 1946 in Stonetown, Zanzibar, now part of Tanzania. 
uh, was a musical icon whose influence on rock and popular music remains unparalleled. As the lead vocalist and principal songwriter for Queen, Mercury's extraordinary talent, flamboyant stage presence, and charismatic personality made him one of the most celebrated performers in music history. His journey from a modest upbringing to international stardom coupled with his untimely death and enduring legacy paints a portrait of a life lived to its fullest. Early Life and Musical Beginnings Farouk was born to Parsi Indian parents. He spent much of his early childhood in Zanzibar and later in India, where he attended St. Peter's School. He was, it was here that young Farouk's musical talent began to shine. He learned to play the piano and formed his first band, The Hectics, which performed covers of Western rock and roll hits. In 1964, political unrest in Zanzibar forced the Balsara family to relocate to England, settling in Feltham, Middlesex. Freddie pursued his education in graphic design at Ealing Art College, graduating in 1969. During this time, he became enamored with the British music scene, drawing inspiration from artists like Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, and Led Zeppelin. The Birth of Queen In the late 1960s, Freddie joined several small bands, but his ambition and unique vision soon led him to something greater. In 1970, he met guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor, members of a band called Smile. After their lead singer departed, Freddie joined the group and suggested a new name, Queen. Bassist John Deacon joined shortly thereafter, completing the lineup. Queen's eponymous debut album was released in 1973, blending rock and opera. It was their 1974 album, Queen 2, however, that marked an artistic breakthrough showcasing Freddie's operatic vocal range and penchant for dramatic storytelling. By 1975, Queen released A Night at the Opera, featuring the iconic track Bohemian Rhapsody. Written by Freddie, the song's intricate composition and groundbreaking music video propelled the band to international fame. A career of unmatched brilliance. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Queen released a string of hit albums, including News of the World in 1977, Jazz in 1978, and The Game in 1980. Mercury's songwriting was pivotal in crafting some of the band's most enduring hits, such as Somebody to Love, We Are the Champions, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and Don't Stop Me Now. Freddie's theatrical stage presence became legendary. Known for his dynamic energy, flamboyant costumes, and the ability to connect with audiences of all sizes, he transformed Queen's concerts into unforgettable experiences. The band's 1985 performance at Live Aid is widely regarded as one of the greatest live performances in rock history. Before a global audience of 1.9 billion, Freddie re- commanded the stage with unparalleled charisma, leading the crowd through anthems like Radio Gaga and We Will Rock You. His personal life. Freddie's personal life was as complex as his music. He was openly bisexual, maintaining long term relationships with Mary Austin and later with Jim Hutton, both of whom in, remained a very important part of his life. Despite his larger than life persona on stage, Freddie was known to be shy and private, often retreating to the company of close friends and loved ones. Mercury also had a deep love for his cats, often considering them part of his family. His eccentric personality combined with his generosity and kindness endeared him to those who knew him best. His illness and death. By the late 1980s, Freddie Mercury began to experience health problems. In 1987, he was diagnosed with AIDS, a disease that was stigmatized and poorly understood. Despite his declining health, Freddie continued to create music at an astonishing pace. Queen's final albums with Freddie, including The Miracle in 1989, and Innuendo in 1991 contained some of his most poignant and powerful performances. Tracks like The Show Must Go On reflect his determination and artistry in the face of adversity. On November 23, 1991, Mercury issued a public statement confirming his AIDS diagnosis. Just one day later, on November 24, 1991, he passed away at his home in London, surrounded by loved ones. He was 45 years old. His death marked the tragic loss for the music world, but his courage in addressing his illness helped raise awareness about AIDS and its devastating impact. His legacy. Freddie Mercury's influence on music, 
performance and cultural is immeasurable. As a vocalist, his four octave range and ability to convey emotion through his voice remain unmatched. Rolling Stone and other outlets have consistently ranked him among the greatest singers of all time. Mercury's contributions to the art of music videos and live performance set a new standard for creativity and showmanship. His theatricality inspired countless artists from David Bowie, Elton John, Lady Gaga, and Adam Lambert. Queen's music, led by Mercury, Mercury's vision, has transcended generations, resonating with audiences worldwide. In 1992, the Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert for AIDS Awareness gathered stars like Elton John, David Bowie, and George Michael to celebrate his life and raise funds for AIDS research. The Mercury Phoenix Trust, established in his honor, continues to fight against HIV and AIDS globally. In 2018, the biographical film Bohemian Rhapsody starring Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury brought his story to a new generation. The film was a massive success, earning multiple awards and rekindling interest in Queen's music. Freddie Mercury's artistry and persona have made him a cultural icon. His unapologetic embrace of individuality and his refusal to conform to societal norms have inspired countless fans to live authentically. In his own words, quote, I won't be a rock star, I will be a legend, end quote. Indeed, he has become exactly that. In conclusion, Freddie Mercury's life was a dazzling symphony of passion, creativity, and resilience. From his humble beginnings in Zanzibar to the global stage as the front man of Queen, he left an indelible mark on music and culture. His death, though tragic, did not diminish his impact. Instead, it cemented his status as a timeless icon. Through his music, his live performances, and fearless individuality, Freddie Mercury continues to inspire generations of fans and artists. His legacy reminds us that true greatness lies not just in the talent, but in the courage to be unapologetically oneself. Thank you all for listening to this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode of Sonic Legacy. This has been a Touch of Madness production, brought to you by the creative minds at Tommy Twins Media.